Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days. I'm back from JDC 2025. And I wanted to do some highlights and kind of do a summary of what I've seen, what I uh, see that is trending. So first of all, I'm just going to give a generic highlight. This is going through ChatGPT and what ChatGPT highlighted. So, um, so ChatGPT did a highlight that one of the things that was shown at uh, JDC, one of the things that was important at JDC is industry trends and reports. In the state of the game industry, it says that one in 10 developers experienced layoff in the past year with half of developers now self-funding their projects. So a lot of uh, gaming effort or game creation effort uh, is shifting from a bigger companies to a smaller titles where developers will be launching their own projects. So getting directly to the consumers without having a big company, just your own uh, stuff. Now, then there's um, unionization uh, efforts. So at JDC, there was United Video Game Workers, and it grew from 100 people uh, to 200 in the first day. So there's a, an effort to unionize uh, to get better, higher quality uh, games for players, better pay, uh, advocating for a better uh, standards for the industry. So essentially kind of trying to bring a leverage into game industry and uh, make sure that people are, are paid fairly, uh, they have uh, better working conditions and um, overall make better product. Another one is technological advances where NVIDIA released a free demo for Half-Life 2 RTX mode where they updated the classic 2004 game with DLSS for uh, support, ray tracing and enhancing texture through NVIDIA uh, RTX Remix platform. So I've seen the videos of that. I mean, it's pretty impressive. It looks really good. Uh, it looks like a, a new game. The only problem, I mean, it's a bit too light comparing with original Half-Life 2, but just this how, how better it is in general is amazing. Um, so there were a couple of award winners. So Game Developers Choice Award recognized Bellatro as the game of the year. Uh, there were some independent game festival awards as well. There were a bunch of indie game highlights. Uh, and one of the major announcers was a Netflix unveiling its first MMO project. Okay. So that, this is like a generic highlight uh, from Chad GPT, what happened at, AGC, at JDC 2025. Now, what I've seen, or I think what is important as general trends, uh, things that I wanted to highlight. So, first of all, I've seen AI. Tons of AI everywhere. Uh, it's in uh, real-time adaptive uh, difficulty, so generative AI. Uh, it's in player coaching and game balancing. It's in generating assets. It's in generating... Um, story there's like tons of ai tons of different implications and uses of ai uh in the gaming space and i think gaming space is a good reflection of a tech industry in general uh and the trends that are you know taken in the game industry going to be seen in many other places so ai is is very very trendy um the other thing that i've seen is a lot of uh, vr and haptic so it's a new way of doing vr where you're going to feel a lot of things that could be your wearable uh, on your hands, like something you wear on your chest. But when you interact with the virtual environment, you're going to also feel it. Uh, and I've seen a couple motion projects in gaming with the VR where um, you've been recorded what's happening. And I mean, you've seen this before. You, you have a setup like this. You can buy a setup like this. But what I found interesting is uh, LiDAR or LiDAR uh, usage where... The same thing that they use in the cars that drive around autonomous cars, self-driving cars, they can use it to scan your movement and project it into the game. Uh, and uh, I have a couple of videos on the channel, but I think it's it's pretty awesome. So uh, it's going to be a new way to play games where you as a character in the VR game uh, and it's kind of full body responsive, right? Uh, another thing that I think very important for Quality assurance is that I've seen a lot of AI in game testing. And uh, it could be from different directions. So one could be embedded into the engine 
and kind of running on a low level together with the game and putting the automation uh, and the AI automation in the game as an engine. But another thing that I saw is the AI agents that are being used like kind of from the outside where the LLM um, talks to the bots and tells them what to do. So based on like visual training and the logs training. So different ways to automate gaming um, testing. And I, th- and I know that it's, it's a big pain point right now when you test games because uh, the amount of scenarios is essentially infinite when you play a game how you build your character, what kind of items you use, how you interact with the quest. It's it's really hard uh, to test game properly. So I think the usage of AI will expand that effort um, and you will be able to test a lot more, a lot faster, cheaper um, by using implements AI, either on the engine level or like kind of looking from the outside into the game and, and interacting with the game. So there's going to be a lot of a lot more of that coming, and I've seen multiple companies already uh, involved in doing that, right? So now, should you be worried, right? If you're doing testing, and obviously AI is, is everywhere in testing, uh, but because it is in gaming, I think, again, gaming is is a very trendy thing. Like, what trends in gaming will trend in other tech industries, the technologies and the thing that's being used for development of the games um the approaches and tools right so i so a couple things so one thing is like i think ai in general is good right and i've talked to a bunch of developers obviously business when you talk to business business loves ai because they think it's some kind of a magic thing that you know make them tons of money um without any drawbacks or setbacks and it's very easy to use. You just tell it what to do, and it does it, right? That's kind of, that's kind of a thing that business thinks. Well, anyone who does development knows it's not true. And when you start talking to development, they they kind of like it and in certain ways and don't like it in other ways. So uh, they like it in a way where they do tedious tasks, the tasks that are repetitive. Like if you're in design and they will be generating some sort of like, uh, you know, Kind of like water or fire, some some things that are um, can be generated, right? But when you talk about um, creating very specific things for a user, like a, a specific sort or specific assets, something that has to be unique, like you know, you don't want AI to touch this. Uh, and the same was the was the code. Some generic things are okay, but when it comes to creating a specific functionality or uh, like creating a very you know captivating story you want the human involvement because you know if you have a game that is 100 ai generated anywhere like the assets the the game script uh coding everything done by ai there's essentially like no soul right it's just empty so you might as well have ai playing the same game where ai builds it ai plays it there's no humans involved obviously there's no profits in such uh in such games so I think AI will be expanding um, work of developers, making it faster, uh, and helping it to kind of focus on things that are important for the game. And just a lot more things can be done in a shorter time with help of AI. And the same thing happening in testing, or will happen in testing. Now, a lot of things that were hard to test uh, in gaming, uh, just because so many variations of things can be happening, AI will be doing a lot of that, right? It will have more of a generic coverage happening where the users or QA engineers will now have to play the game on kind of uh, what user would typically do. Uh, Most common builds will test the game in terms of, hey, um, is the game actually interesting to play? Uh, If the main quest, uh, how can I approach the main quest maybe in a specific way? Can I break the game in some specific way? You know, uh, doing more of exploration and kind of feedback testing, right? And I also think that a lot of responsibility um, on managing the AI testing will will become kind of the tester's responsibility. So you will be overseeing AI, you will be suggesting cases and overlooking the reporting and the results that the AI brings. Because, you know, uh, the big question is, at least for me, is who is going to test the tester if it's all AI 
uh, and AI doing some false positives or just, you know, saying things are passing where they're actually not working as expected. There, there has to be someone overlooking and kind of uh, managing all that. So for the QA industry, we will see more AI implemented on many different levels, but I think it's going to be as more of an expansion, but not substitute. So you'll have to um, kind of oversee what AI is doing. You will have more coverage, faster. Uh, it's going to be cheaper because... Uh, not cheaper in general, but because you do more for kind of the same price. Um, your testing responsibilities probably going to be more focused on exploration, like kind of capturing the experience, uh, making sure the core scenarios work as expected, but also managing the AI itself, managing the reporting, giving priorities, uh, analyzing the results, and making sure that those uh, the testing is actually valid. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's what what's coming, right? So my general expression of the game development conference, the highlights for me were uh, AI generating assets, AI for testing, uh, tons of different VR and uh, VR that interacts with real environment more um, with haptic sensors and so on. So that's that's my highlight. Now out of that, you can explicitly say, what will affect all industries, uh, tech industries, is just use of AI for testing and how it's going to be implemented. Uh, specifically in gaming, AI agents running from the outside or AI built in into the engine of the game where it helps to test as you build a game. Uh, you deploy it and uh, on the on the like low level. Um, and yeah, and I think it's going to kind of spread and it's already kind of spreading in other industries uh for qa as well right there was a lot of or still a lot of jokes about uh, vibe coding <laughs> i think we want to avoid vibe testing where someone you know just uses ai for testing without understanding any testing because uh if you read about vibe coding um the the outcome of it someone writes a product creates a product without understanding any code and the end result is uh, there are a lot of security flaws. Uh, the bill for like running running some services are just extremely high because some things are just not done properly and it keeps on like spinning. So there's a lot of issues coming up with wipe coding when you code without understanding like what you're doing and knowing how to fix it yourself. You know, projects get kind of blown up uh, and they just become unmanageable and falling apart so the, th the same thing will be with testing if you just will start vibe testing uh, by essentially giving all the testing to i you'll have test results that don't make any sense or it's all passing but when you actually go and look into things they're not working as expected and all other funny things might be happening um, so the future is more ai everywhere but you definitely want to have it as a tool that someone else is overseas, a real person or multiple people or a team, and not just, hey, business is going to just use AI and get rid of humans. Because if you're going to do everything with AI, you're going to A, get a, a bad, empty, kind of soulless product. B, the product just be generally poorly written with a lot of flaws and problems. And you're not going to be able to build upon it because you, know, you, you give bad code, try to build upon bad code, you're going to get even more bad code uh, resulting in just terrible product all right so yeah this is my highlight uh from jdc 2025 i think overall gaming industry gives a very good understanding sum up of the direction of development and tech industry in general what kind of technologies uh we're gonna see and tools emerge um let me know what you think in the comments this was alex usa days thank you for watching bye bye